This poisonous concoction trickster is the most fun I've had playing a build since Explode RF. Using a Frenzy and Affliction charge stacking setup, this build easily hits dot DPS cap, even on a reasonable budget, though the cost of the build is constantly changing due to the limited supply of corrupt uniques and forbidden jewels. The core uniques synergize immensely for Chaos dot builds, coming together to provide a ton of speed, damage, and QOL for this character. Swift Killer from Trickster also provides two maximum Frenzy charges. The limit is further increased by Alessia's Delight and Posso Implicits on Shield, Ring, and Glove slots. The last of these tend to be really cheap and what I would probably go for first, um, Corrupted Tanuahi or Corrupted Asinas Gentle Touch. Alessia's Delight also gives you the ability to generate Affliction Charges, not just Frenzies, which grant 8% more ailment damage per charge. In my setup, this belt more than doubles my damage. Rebka Badge of the Brotherhood is also able to leverage this Giga Frenzy stacking setup, giving you an equal number of Endurance Charges per Frenzy. For my build, that's a true 50% PDR and 50 to all res. Really important, especially when you're running a ton of uniques for gear simplicity. The battery for charges, as you'll see on a ton of other builds, is Relic Catch's Impatience. It enables both green charges, so both Frenzies and Afflictions, something that's crazy broken. Just to note here, Affliction Charge Generation on bosses comes from the Poger's Mark that I run, and while mapping comes from Blood Rage. Now to make up for the Relic Catch nerf, the lack of move speed, I'm also running Restless Ward. Now this is probably replaceable with a rare chest, and a rare chest probably performs better in terms of its raw numbers. However, the charge benefits of Restless Ward are crazy. They give a ton of move speed, I think 50% for my build, and almost 1000 life regen passively. Corruptions on this chest are also really cheap, and because corruptions are cheap, 6 linking using Tainted Fusings is also really cheap. Lastly, my setup also leverages a Forbidden Jewel setup from Assassin, granting Noxious Strikes. This isn't mandatory, but gives you something like 60% more damage, and you'll need to tattoo a little bit more poison chance if you don't run these jewels. I picked them up for 40 chaos. I probably wouldn't pay for a divine though for this forbidden set. One final question. People keep asking me why don't I go Pathfinder with the Raider Jewels? And I think Trickster is just so much stronger at the lower to mid end for this build. And even in the late game, Trickster still has much better mapping based recovery, a bigger max pool to scale off of defensively, and definitely easier access to damage. I think all items equal, Trickster is going to have almost 80% more damage than Pathfinder. I've really enjoyed this build, I want to go over the POB. I hope I don't miss too much because I think it's a build that's really replicable, especially at the low end. So I want to go over the tree first just because it's probably the easiest and fast thing to do. On Ascendancies, I go for the Overleash from Soul Drinker, and this is really great for your recovery. I take Swift Killer, it's a frenzy stacking build, really strong, and the duration is actually really sick too for your Affliction Charges. And then Polymath is just generically powerful, 36% more damage, and just absolutely absurd recovery, especially when I think about the Atlas that I'm running for Breach. Otherwise, this tree is sort of like a poison build, but it does make it all the way down here. Now, there's different things you can do here. You could just like anoint Disciple of the Unyielding, but the reason I path the Endurance Charge nodes is not only for the damage, which is relatively efficient, but I'm also doing this because I really value this 3% AoE. The rest of the tree should be fairly straightforward. I do run a Parandus Pact over here, though. The other one you could opt for is a Chaos Resistance Parandus Pact. You could go for Max Life. Chaos Res Parandus Pact, in my mind, is a bit overkill. It would let you skip Chaos Res everywhere else in your build. But you're already getting a little bit here and a little bit here, and just the amount of damage this thing gives is kind of crazy. Like, this is my Uber DPS config, and... Well, this isn't even config in properly, but I mean, it gives like, I think somewhere around 30 or 40% more damage. I'm not going to count the nodes right now, but basically this thing is just insane. I mean, I'm probably around 20 million uber DPS with this config right now. I do go for lethal pride. So if you can find strength on gear and then cap your res elsewhere, it's possible to go glorious vandy. And I think glorious vandy down here is really strong as well. Moving the cluster over here and running Doriani. Because getting a bigger ES pool, I think, gives you somewhere in the range of 15-20% to 20 more EHP, or max hit, um, so that's pretty cool. Some trickster stuff, I offer this instead of um, this, as far as ES masteries. I really like to have um, the Fizz taken as. Now, this usually doesn't really help out your Fizz mitigation that much, but when I'm doing like Big Boom or there's Overwhelm, especially on T17 maps, this mod can be quite helpful in general. Rest of the tree, just follow along. It's Fairly straightforward. I would say the last nodes you want to take if you have a lower level character include probably not running the cluster, which I'm using just for explode pretty much. And I mean, this shield's kind of shit. And then probably this you could skip for a while. It's a lot of increased damage because Poison's Concoction of Bouncing actually counts as chaining for each bounce. So this mastery on average is probably around five to six bounces. Gear wise, now the gear's gonna look really crazy because I invested more into it, as you do with builds. 
but that mostly came in three places. Firstly, Awaken GMP. Uh, this, I don't know how expensive it is, but it only gives you one proj, so you can just count the proj down one. And then it's two Frenzy, so I have a Frenzy Implicit Shield and a Frenzy Implicit Ring. I think everything else on this build is fairly affordable. I can also draw plus three gems here. So let's set this to regular DPS. I'm like, you know, somewhere in the range of dog cap plus, uh, we'll count this out right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 times 6 is about 100% increased damage, I think. So 100% increased. All right, so that's our config right now. If I drop my Frenzy cap from 12 to 10, because I have a pretty insane shield here. Actually, no, we drop it from, well, it depends. So I use Parapetti at the start, which is a unique synth shield. I think those, when I bought it, the plus one Frenzy was like 100 chaos. Let's just say you can't afford that anymore, and you also can't afford a plus one Frenzy ring. This is an investment for later. I don't think this is worth it, but it is what it is. So let's drop this down to um, 10 max Frenzy. And that changes my DPS from dot cap to dot cap. And then I can drop my peacock bouncing from Wiccan GP down to GMP. So that would run from 12 to 11. And then let's assume we don't have these implicit. So I got to drop two on this gem. And then one of each level of every single gem. And you see that I've gone from dot cap on this build to still dot cap. So I think even without the corruptions, I mean, it's just really powerful. Now where you'll start to see pretty big losses is if like you drop the forbidden set. And then now you're at like 22 mil and like, you know, I mean, that's still really, really insane considering how easy it is and how cheap it is to assemble a build like this. Also, gearing is much easier if you don't use synth because you have fractures, you have grave crafting, you know, yeah, that sort of thing. But anyways, let's go back into the rest of this setup. Where's my flesh? There's my flame. I'm not going to reconfig it. It is what it is. It'll be fine later. Um, gear wise, I have this min frenzy shield self-crafted. I think I did this through... Essences, I think, like Chaos Res Essence, and it's pretty tight on res. Helmet, Fracture Suppression. I really like to have this trigger focus. You don't need to run it. It's technically a loss in power, but I'm triple triggering curses, which is Despair, Enfeeble, and Poachers, and I have four total curses. I always run a Temporal Chains Gloves, whether that's on Tanu Ahi or I run um, Asnas. And of course, Anathema is what's giving you the plus four with the Frenzy Node or the Power Node up here. But I really like to have this trigger focus. It just makes everything way smoother to do. You can cast your curses, and you can go for different things like Fizz As. Though that's not really that good because you have 50% PDR, so it's kind of shitty. Rest of Sword, I already spoke about this earlier. Tanuahi, these gloves are really, really strong. Um, I just think that Corrupted Implicits are really powerful to have because the plus one frenzy is crazy. I use Asnas when I'm mapping, and these are even cheaper to get because it's single corrupt versus double corrupt, but Tanu is my single target setup. Relicash, you can also corrupt these for suppression. Not sure how insanely expensive that'd be, but the boots are mandatory. Replica badge, really cheap. I don't know. I think it was like a 10C amulet when I bought it. Don't know how much it is. Relatively low supply, but pretty much mandatory if you want to have enough res and good PDR. Res ring here. Not done crafting this yet. Just started, but kind of ran out of money. Anathema, and then Alessios. Straightforward stuff. Nothing too crazy. For flasks, you want to really be using the 30 qual flasks. I could vol these and, you know, gamble for 40, but I just, like, don't care to do that because, as you saw, I'm well over dot cap and I can, like, kill ubers in one phase right now with this build. Um, but you really want to go for saturated. Really strong. Flask setup, I like this. It's just pretty much optimizing for mapping speed. On bosses, you could do different things like playing tri -Ellie flask. And you do have some degree of flash generation. So like, let's say you played four Divine Life Flasks because you really will never want to run out on bosses and then you could actually go for a Progenesis um, for a late game bossing setup. And this would actually have decent uptime because you actually have pretty good flash sustain from this. You know, you're attacking three and a half times a second, every attack hits 12 times, 30-ish percent crit. Basically, you have a chance to generate some amount of Frenzy Charges that isn't zero. And I also run a Watcher's Eye right now. Oh no, I took that one out. All right, so the Forbidden Set talked about Lethal Pride. This is pretty much just going for strength everywhere. I might have Fire Res on one of these nodes. Yeah, Fire Res here and Fist Taken Ass here, but it's generally just to get enough strength to play Shield Charge and Life Tap. Jewel here. This could be much better. I was dicking around with this Bleed because I was kind of wanting to take the um, Bleed Poison Mastery, but this isn't really that good, honestly. Per value, per node value, rather, it's relatively weak. I play a large for Explode. Um... I mean, it's weaker, 
for your damage if you do this, but I like to have the extra explode because I'm running like really, really, really high delirious content, running like nine reward, basically farming a full simulacrum in like half my strand maps and doing a ton of breach. Prandus pack talked about and the watcher's eye. I'm going for great suppress. There's other things you can do. You could be tattooing much more of the dexterity into suppression. And honestly, I probably just should be doing that right now, but I kind of got lazy. And I didn't really feel like doing like 18,000 trays to do that, but there's a bunch of different watches I have to go for. This is super not mandatory. I think it actually gives me like almost nothing if I just tattoo suppress. Links. So this setup is not EB and also has no mana. So I life tap everything. Life tap movement setup. Over here, for aura setup, pure developments, you also need to run a helmet implicit for reservation efficiency. If you don't run enlightened four, you just need to take this and grab this mana reservation. It's right here. You can run, I think, E3. Maybe you can go E2. Um, and that would let you run your setup. So that's pretty cool. Pretty easy to do. Not a problem at all. Next thing, talk about the curse setup. Also needs to be life tapped, I think, because you still pay the cost of things when you trigger them. But this is in the helmet always because you focus trigger. Precision, arrogance. This is kind of questionable. Again, if I took this mana mastery, I could maybe move this and like get more Axion gear into mana, but I don't really know. And I'm also not hit chance cap anyway, as is. Blood Rage, I like this a lot for two main reasons. Firstly, it does give you charge generation while you're mapping. Secondly, it enables Tanuahi. If you don't really spend life all the time, um, your uptime as far as Onslaught and Adrenaline is much worse. Now, this build is already much worse than, like, say, my Cox Trickster in terms of Tanu uptime because that was running Rain of Arrows of Saturation, which is hitting, like, I don't know, 40 times per attack, whereas I'm only hitting, like, 12. But this is still really good, and it's much more enabled with Blood Rage. Six link ping kong setup. So if you only have a four link, which is what people ask, uh, most important things, peacock, GV, greater and multiple projectiles. These, um, and I guess life tap, are the four most important links. And then that's it, because it's really simple. Peacock doesn't even run a weapon. Pretty straightforward build. I think it's really, really easy to replicate this kind of thing and very easy to assemble, which is why I'm really pushing for this. It also feels amazing. Great boster, dog cap, done T17s, um, but it's not great at T17 content. Wouldn't try to like farm it. I've run like 20 or so maps. It gets pretty bad sometimes. Like the barrel mod is just absolutely absurd. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this build. It's actually sick. And then we'll come back in a couple days and I have something that will be pretty much not replicable at all as the next one, but it'll be a total banger.